We let us state for the record that this is not an official press statement from the Council of Patriot. Our leader, our father, and the father of post-war La Guardia Democracy, leader Henry P. Costa, is speaking to the nation today in his citizen capacity as part of his civil duty as an African citizen. So today, the statement here does not reflect the view, the aspirations of the Council of Patriots for Henry P. Costa, a reputable citizen, a moral voice in the African society, in a continuous strive to give the the leadership it deserves. So the, the question will read, and then we'll take very few questions, and depending on the time that we, we will have, and then at most, at most five questions, we'll take that from the principal, from all the media, so you cannot be, uh, you know, taking at a time. We beg you, the media, to please, you know, minimize the question into at least five, so we don't take the rest of the day. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. The stage is all yours. Good afternoon, uh, fellow Liberians, and uh, good afternoon to members of the former state and to my friends and brothers here present. Uh, it's good to be here. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, fellow Liberians, and friends of Liberia, I stand before you today to speak on the flawed first phase of the biometric voter registration exercise, which ended on April 9, and the worsening economic hardship in the country. The first phase of the biometric voter registration exercise was a disaster. The National Elections Commission failed to deliver on its mandate to provide, to provide a fair, transparent, and efficient voter registration process. We saw numerous system failures, including malfunctioning biometric machines and a lack of properly trained staff. The outcome of this flawed exercise is already evident in the low turnout of individuals eligible to register to be able to vote on October 10, 2023, particularly in areas where these failures were most pronounced. This is unacceptable and considerably calls into question the integrity of the electoral process in Liberia. The signs of voter suppression were also evident. Reports have emerged of individuals being turned away from registration centers based on flimsy reasons. The time allotted to conduct the first phase of the voter registration, especially in the most populous county of Montserrado, was very insufficient. Also, there was the issue of inaccessibility of registration centers we saw far too many people having to travel long distances, especially in the rural areas, oftentimes only to be told after they had made a long and hard journey that, quote, the system is down, unquote. This is a clear attempt to disenfranchise certain segments of the population and undermine the democratic process. In light of this, let me strongly re-echo the fervent call by the leader of the opposition, former Vice President Joseph Yaman Boakai, that a voter registration period be extended to allow all eligible Liberians to register so that they may be able to exercise that God-given, constitutionally guaranteed franchise in the all-important October 10, 2023 general and presidential elections. As we move forward to the second phase of the biometric voter registration exercise, we demand that the NEC do a much better job. That they must ensure that the exercise is conducted with fairness, transparency, and efficiency. They must take steps to address the system failures that played the first phase and put in place measures to prevent voter suppression. Meanwhile, the grinding poverty 
that continues to afflict our people more so now than probably ever in our nation's history weighs heavily on me and all well-meaning Liberians. We are not oblivious, however, of the perennial and sad reality that Liberia has always been one of the poorest countries in the world, with over 60% of the population almost always living below the poverty line. But the inexcusably patent incompetence, underpinned by woeful negligence and breakdown in law and order, coupled with a lack of leadership by President George Weir, has only exacerbated the poverty situation. The widespread prevalence of our children on the streets selling candies, cold water, and biscuits, to name a few, rather than being in a school where they should be productively molded as our future leaders, is beyond heartbreaking. Today, Liberians are suffering more than at any point in our peacetime existence as a country. Unemployment rates remain very high and corruption is ever rampant, thus undermining the country's potential to make economic growth and development. The future of our dear country, it is time to put our differences aside and focus on the common good. We need a leadership that is capable, prudent, and compassionate to break our country and people free from the shackles of corruption, bad governance, and the debilitating, dehumanizing poverty that we see all around us. We need a leader who will put the interests of Liberians first, who will work tirelessly to improve the lives of our people, who will ensure that, that the democratic process is upheld. My fellow compatriots, members of the Povis state, while it may be weary and bleak today, honor this horrible calamity called George Weir. But I firmly believe that together we can break and end this nightmare on October 10, 2023. Let us continue to labor together on the noble task to build a harmonious, wholesomely functional, and prosperous Liberia for all of our people and our future generations. May God bless us all and save our beloved motherland. Manna, 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 The queen, the queen, the queen, the policy statement, the queen. The queen. Zayu, you, the massive leader has spoken. Zayu, you. Zayu. you. So, you listen to our leader, and then we tend to do the media for five questions. When we recognize you, you call your name, your media institution, and you ask a question in no more than one minute. So we start with my friend here. Uh, folks, my name is Achi Buan, and I report for Today Labro TV. Uh, Chief of your recent explanation, we talk about extension into the DVR process. And this drove my attention to the, the issue of bank costings. The, the National Election Commission is already complaining of low budget, and now talking about the extension. Don't it, of course, a very huge rate on the National Election Commission? That's a good question. We had six years to prepare for these elections. Democracy is expensive. If you don't believe me, try the opposite. The government has no excuse to be crying about insufficient resources. Besides, we've received millions of dollars from our international partners. The, the US government, through USAID, for example, committed itself to a whopping $20 million contribution. So resources should not be the problem. The fact that the DVR, the biometric voter registration exercise, is done in phases is concerning. It is because of the lack of sufficient registration kits. That's why they split the country up into two parts. Because they, have, they don't have enough equipment to do the entire country simultaneously. Now what happens on election day? Are we going to split the country up into two parts to vote? Are we going to vote? in nine counties on day one, and then day two vote in the remaining six counties? It is not possible. The Elections Commission needs to tell us when they will bring into the country all of the kits required to ensure smooth, simultaneous 
voting on election day. So the lack of resources or the scarcity of resources is not an issue. The president should start flying private jets, perhaps, so that the funds that he wastes flying private jets to make useless travels abroad that bring us no dividends can be allotted to procure more BVR kits. Going to the Middle East for 48 days to see your son play football last year, did he not know that we would be having elections this year? Even more reason why we need to stand up firmly and ensure that this man's nightmare of a leadership is ended. Speak. Next question, please. Nathaniel Debo. My concern is that uh, are you satisfied with the composition of the board of commissioners at the Elections Commission with these issues being raised by you? Mr. Debo, thank you for that very valid question. We're not satisfied. Satisfy is the last thing that we are. We have a very infamous case in point. In 2019, there was a by-election. There were two by-elections. One which brought Senator Dillon to the Senate, and the other one that should have brought Ms. Tellier Yuri to the House of Representatives. We saw how those by-elections went. Uh, uh, we, we, we saw how they went. Mr. Floyd Sale, who would later be nominated by this president to the position of commissioner with direct oversight over the data center, was then the head of the, the director of the data center. He was clearly instructed by the hearing officer at the neck when the complaint was raised by Ms. Eurystein to not commingle or mix up the votes from the problematic area with the rest of the votes. Mr. Sayo deliberately, maliciously, clandestinely, and diabolically refused and disobeyed a direct instruction and mixed up supposedly quarantine votes with the rest of the votes in a clear effort to influence the outcome of the election. When he did that, we recall that decision prompted a rerun in certain parts of District Number 15. In the end, Ms. Telia Yuri was still denied victory. So Mr. Sale, now sitting in a much powerful position to cause greater harm to our democracy, is something that scares us and that we will demand and continue to insist that Mr. Sale be ejected, removed from that position so that he may not do anything that can cause us any further harm. So no, Mr. Dave to answer your question, we are not satisfied with the current crop of commissioners at the Elections Commission. We are, we are not. Thank you. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Uh, I'm Shakespeare says, and I report for Chat TV Online and Dark 124 website. Uh, my question has to do with the BVR process. From the beginning, uh, we were told that if you just put your tongue there uh, on, the, on, the, on the BVR machine, if you go and register, you're going to be detected whether you registered multiple times. But at the end of the day, we saw librarians registering more than one time. And the next time we saw, I mean, the election commissioner, Madam, the other branch told us that they would carry on an exercise to clear out all of those who registered two times. And yesterday, they were carrying on the process. What does this mean for the country on election days if you have registered and go to the polling center and your name is in the from the list. What can you say to that? That is a brilliant question. And I'm glad you asked that. We're supposed to be migrating from the old system, I believe it's called the ORM, to the biometric. Okay. And the biometric is supposed to prevent double registration or multiple registration by one individual. Because the whole idea of the biometric is to ensure that your biometric uh, 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 data is in a system to, to prevent any unscrupulous person from registering more than once. But unfortunately, what you're witnessing here is not a biometric voter registration exercise. It's a fiasco. A biometric, a legitimate biometric voter registration would not allow John Brown to register two times because your, your, your fingerprint is in the system. The next time you show up at another voter registration center, the system should recognize you and say that you have already registered to vote. How can you say 
after conducting supposedly a biometric voter registration exercise, then you are going to conduct a cleanup. A biometric voter registration exercise does not need a cleanup because no one person should be allowed to register more than once. And this is a very good question you asked because we've consulted with experts and they've told us this is not a biometric voter registration ex exercise. There are people in this country, elements of the CDC, who have been allowed to register more than once with the intent to vote more than once on election day. This process is not a biometric process, which is why we in the opposition want to call on our leaders to engage with the National Elections Commission so that we can witness and participate in that so-called cleanup exercise, which should not be happening in the very first place. This was a scam of an effort. It was not a biometric effort. And I'm glad you know that. So thank thanks you. for coming. My name is Desmond Moyo, and I report for In Your Television. Uh, my attention has been drawn to your opening statement of your press conference, where you describe the phase one of the election as disastrous. And uh, I'm also a bit concerned, as for recent time, you once participated in the disastrous process. Don't you think it was necessary after understanding the process being so disastrous and uh, what would say you could back off because the system is not being safe as you are expected? Seven more, what is that fear that you uphold now you're calling for extension of phase two? What would be your reactions if NEC does not comply with your appeal? So, my brother, you expect us to simply back out of the process and allow Mr. Weir stay, stay on? because we have issue or we have fundamental issues with the process? No, we were not. We will remain engaged, but we will call out, when necessary, the flaws that characterize the process. Because the process, election is not, it is a process. And one of the most critical phases of that process is the voter registration exercise. Because the people who are registered are the ones who are supposed to be allowed to vote on election day. So this process is flawed because people were allowed to, to register more than... I have a concern relative to what you just mentioned. The NDC yesterday released that about 1,400,000 plus Nigerians are registered. According to the commission, that number is subject to change because obviously across all voter registration processes, there will be, of course, a fraudulent process of which that's why the deduplication process is being in full swing. Uh, the commission has rolled out that so as to ensure that all those are registered more than twice wow. of these trips. But have, um, so I have two concerns. I could one. Make. Just one, please. Uh, just one. So my concern is that if you look at the statistics from 2011, especially looking at rural counties that have registered, uh, it tells that there is a slight in the number of registered voters. Ten more seconds. You will look at uh, 2011 statistics, 2017, and now 2023, which to some extent proves that uh, the statistics provided currently reconcile with previous statistics in terms of the population group. How come persons of you will be, I mean, somehow caught in the process first? Did you not say that? I said, oh, of course. Okay, you said that. If this process was biometric, do you know what biometric is? Does anybody really know what a biometric process is? A biometric process is almost foolproof, like you can't cheat the system. God made us very unique. Each human being has a distinct fingerprint, unique only to you. That is why when they say biometric, it means that system cannot be cheated. The fact that the Elections Commission is telling us nowhere in the world has any electoral body conducted a biometric voter registration exercise and then later on said they had to do a cleanup. This was not a manual process, it's biometric. Nobody should have been allowed to register twice or three times. So the fact that they say they are going to remove, they're going to purge the data of multiple registration, does that not leave a big doubt in your mind as to what the real number of actual legitimate registered voters are? We want to consider as well. No, 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 hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is not a back and forth. It's not a debate. You ask a question. Once it is biometric, immediately upon the conclusion of the exercise, the numbers should be constant. Because if the system was legitimate, if the system was not fraudulent, 
There should be no need for cleanup because no one person should have been able to register more than once. So you ask your question and you defeated your own question or you answer it. The process was fraudulent because they have to do a cleanup. What kind of decent process requires a cleanup? Who can answer that? The neck itself is a meeting that the 1,435,000 plus register uh, 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 of voters they put out, that it needs to be purged. It, need to be it, it needs to be cleaned. They have to do cleansing. They have to sanitize it because some of those voters are not real. They should not have more than one card. So it's fraudulent. That's the evidence right there. They have admitted to you the fraudulent, the fraudulence that characterize the process. And that's what we're saying we don't trust them. How sure are you that they're going to remove all the multiple regist registrations? Will you be there to witness that? Will anybody here be there? Will, it, will, 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 will they invite the political parties to witness it? We demand cleanup exercise. As unfortunate as it is, which goes back to our original point that these people are incompetent and should not be there. We demand to witness the so-called cleanup of the voter roll. We should not be talking.